Uh, I mean, uh, it kind of unhappy as me, guys. Uh, it kind of just takes them from me having some like having to fail, and instead of looking outward, uh, you you really, really, really have to look inward and see what you're doing and like what Steve said, like the process, like what is the process that you're following and that you're getting the results. And say if you're, say if you're extremely late one day, or extremely extremely late, like one weekend, and like you look back in your results and all you did was like T or. Like, you, you didn't really get any early swings, so it's kind of like you look back and you do, all right, I, I'm going to need to get the head out, so I'm going to do that by putting the feet super high and, like, seeing high velocity. It's like looking at all the things that you did to get to where you were, and, like, that's what I do when I'm struggling. I just analyze that, and if my process is genuinely good, then I just continue to stick through it. But, like, there would be times this year when you when you succeed, and you, you're following, like, some sort of weird routine, and then you keep following it, you keep following it, and then finally you fail, and you're, you look at that routine that you've been doing, and you're like, wow, that doesn't make any sense, and isn't really conducive for long-term success. So, that, that, that for me, at least, I look inward and, and analyze what, like, I'm doing to prepare for that moment, and a lot of, like, a lot, I don't know, a lot of people do the same, much of the same, too, so. And I guess, I guess my biggest question, then, would be for everyone here. You said failure, and, and, or, and Howie said something about dieting, and Robbie said something about pitching. How do you know, or how do we know that, like, it's not outside, of the, the, the thing that is causing the failure in your eyes, what you deem as a failure, isn't outside your control. So actually, your process was absolutely sound, but because, you know, something external was happening. Like, for example, Robbie, Robbie gave up a home run. Let's say Robbie gets absolutely ripped. A bunch. How do we know that they don't have the catcher signs? So Robbie thinks it's his process. His process thinks he has to change stuff up. And all of a sudden it's like, well, no, they just knew the catcher signs and they, they knew what was coming. Or, or, you know, anything like that. How are we losing weight? You know, his process sucks, process sucks. How do we know that, you know, he doesn't have some sort of, I don't know, nutritional ke- chemical balance that isn't messing them up a little bit or something. I, you know what I mean? How do you, how do you, how do you combat that? Um, I thought the biggest thing for me is that I could feel it, like, inside of me that I lost that edge that I had. Mm. Um, and I thought that was probably one of the hardest things because it wasn't a fix that I could look at on video or I could mess around with, like, a grip, how I was throwing a pitch. Like, I could feel that I lost that competitive edge that I had because my confidence was shocked because, like I said, I was putting too much stock into the fact that, you know, I didn't throw the ball well last time. And, uh... I guess kind of circling around to changing things, all it took for me, it was so awesome, was all it took for me was one inning. One inning where I went out and I just threw the shit out of it, and I was back. It was unreal. Um, and that was one of the more, I guess, rewarding feelings, just getting the ball and, like, understanding that, like, all it's going to take is one inning, one out, um, to kind of get that back. And I rolled from there, so... It's so funny that you said um, so. It's an, so it's an internal process. It's something that you f- you just feel internally, like you yeah, knew you knew yeah. you knew just just because you knew yourself, right? It had nothing to do with oh, okay, I gave up a home run, whatever. It because I didn't feel well, and it's Howie. I, I think it's funny that we diet so much, and we 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 feel like we'll we'll work out, we run, we do whatever, and we feel really good, and then we're like oh well, we're not getting the results we want, but we feel hella good. So, I mean, like, at some point in time, isn't that the goal? Is just to feel really good? <laughs> I guess, yeah. I don't know, man. I mean, I still look good with my shirt off. You know what I mean? I'm not going to say I don't, but. Robbie, that's a great point. And uh, Steve, uh, I can actually speak on that. So, like, last year, I would always, I mean, I, I kind of, like, like, I really like to hit. I love the, like, feel of it. And last year, I would, I would chase a result. Like, this is for, like, specifically for training. Like, I would chase a result, and I needed to have that result, like, multiple times instead of, like, this year, whereas, like, I just focus on, like, feel. And if I felt good, I was done hitting. When it, or, like, versus, like, chasing some sort of result. And it's just, like, if I didn't get that result, then I would make up a problem in my head that was wrong with my swing. When in reality, like, I should have just been chasing, like, that feel. So it's, like, the feel versus the result. Thing. Mm. Like, you know, keep it, uh, yeah, I mean, Stevie, basically, with what, uh, going up with Gallus was just saying, I mean, the reason why I get so stuck and I feel like I should be better is because I step on the scale and look for a number. Yep. And if it's not the number that I want, I feel like I'm disappointed in myself, I didn't reach my goal, all this stuff. But when you're right, the reality work out like every day, we run, we lift, we feel great. But just because I looked at that number, I didn't reach that certain goal that I set for myself, I feel like. 
you know, I feel like crap. And that's, I mean, that's, that, that, that is probably another six hour conversation we can have about like results and numbers, Howie, which is so funny to me. Like, and, and I mean, you talk about this all the time, like, Hey, I want to be, I want to be a hundred pounds or, or 200 pounds, right? Like I'm going to be 200 pounds today instead of 215 pounds. So I diet and I work yeah. out and then all of a sudden what happens? Uh, I'm, I'm 205 pounds, right? And then I'm like, Ooh, I'm close. And then I get to 200 pounds. I'm like, dude, I did it. You know, I've reached my goal, but how do I know that I probably shouldn't have been 185 pounds? You know what I mean? Like, that's, what's amazing to me is I think we limit ourselves a lot of times when we focus on a number. So like in baseball, in baseball, like I, I, you know, when I played, I always had a batting average in mind that I wanted to hit. Right. So in college, it's like 350. I want about 350. Right. I want to hit 10 home runs or whatever the goal is. And it amazes me, though, that, OK, if you if you hit 340, you're a failure. And then if you hit 350, you're a success. What if you were supposed to hit or you were good enough to hit 420? Right. But you 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 capped yourself at 350. And I see that a lot with kids. Right. You see that all the time with kids being like, I want this ERA. I want to I want to go to D1. I want to do this. I want to do that. And once they hit it, it's 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 over. So.